Welcome to today's All Change, where we put design at the heart of the learning experience. Today we're in Highgate in Birmingham at Chandos Primary School. We're going to be helping to create an outdoor learning environment, which reflects the multicultural and vibrant atmosphere in this school. Chandos Primary School is a typical 1970s building. Like many inner city schools, it serves a diverse multicultural community with high pupil mobility. The latest group to arrive in this area are Somalian. After speaking to staff at Chandos, we've designed a simple and effective space for staff, parents and pupils. The design reflects the school's ongoing work to celebrate its inclusive ethos and provides a welcoming and useful learning resource. The school wanted us to design a welcoming outdoor learning area at the front of the building. And over a single weekend, with a budget of £700, we'll be bringing together the school community to effect an exciting transformation. And also in today's All Change, we'll be visiting Warsaw Academy, a brand new £17 million school with state-of-the-art facilities. We'll be showcasing a futuristic design for a primary school, one of the government's schools for the future. Radical ideas for stimulating debate about school design and some imaginative ideas for storage to help clear up clutter around your school. With space at a premium, Chandos Primary were looking to make the most of this rather unsightly entrance area. Helping us meet the challenge are Shilanda de Cruz Architects in Birmingham. They consulted with the school to design a sensory garden, with timber decking providing a seated area for the children. Marco de Cruz led the process with his partner, Maria Shalanda. They took all change project manager, John Craig, to the school. Curved decking will form the focal point of the design. So the idea then, you have this sort of sinuous bench in between, and then it sort of kicked up like a cobra at the end and sort of uh, created a sign next to the door. What's really? actually going on the sign? Uh, welcome. Maria Shalanda developed an elegant planting scheme for the scruffy patch of ground. We want to have some vertical plants going in here, perhaps some poplars, and then a bit of lavender and some other herbaceous things. Very simple that some things will send to things so when they are sitting out here they can actually smell the plants. A successful site visit helped refine the design for the space. What came from our discussion was it's very important in, in the city area to create a enhancing, interesting, stimulating outdoor learning space. And we thought it would be very interesting if we could have a nice little quiet corner where perhaps a little group of children can come out with a teacher and they can do a bit of reading and they can be stimulated by listening to birds and smelling the plants and put sort of colourful and also scented plants in. A lot of the children might not have gardens, they may be living in flats or apartments, and the, the school environment is where they may come into contact with those sort of things. Mm. So the colour, the, uh, the vibrancy, the smells, and the opportunity to sit outside in a, in a space that they can learn in was really important. I think it will create um, a very positive space in the school. Um, I envisage that small groups of children might spend time there. Um, for example, a learning mentor might take a couple of children or even one child into that space. Um, it's, it's because of the plants that have been chosen, it's meant to be a kind of calming place. Um, so, you know, I, I, can, I can see that it will make a great difference to us. We have a lot of challenging children within the school. John, the weather's not great for us, but this is going to be a really fun project. Tell me what we're going to be doing. It's lovely weather for a start, anyway. <laughs> um, we're using decking, lots of decking here, but not as you kind of normally know. We're going to actually come down the wall with this. Marco and Maria thought it'd be nice to have sweeping lines. We've got some sideboarding. And of course, we've got all our lovely plants here. Now, in the corner, it's a little bit of a dead area. It's full of rubbish at the moment. So we're going to sort of landscape all this little bit here. And uh, right behind there, we're going to have a great big white wall sweeping just to lift it out a little bit. And hopefully just sharpen everything up a little bit. And rather than just have plain decking, running down there. We're going to get the children to do this uh, emblem of the school, which is a sunflower. So the school's going to have a really great area here with plants, um, with an area to sit, that they can use within the curriculum, that they can take back into the school. Very much so. On a lovely day like today, they'll be able to sit on this bench here, amongst all the plants, all the foliage, and of course all that sort of colouring around them. Just, yeah, so it'll be a nice, nice area for them. So there's going to be plenty to do then? A lot of it. 
to get your working clothes off. John Craig teamed up with year one teacher Carl Peterzak to measure and cut the hundreds of decking boards needed for the scheme. You know what we're doing? No. So only six of those stacked there. 25 of those stacked inside. They're the skinny ones. Yeah. Did you see? Hang on, I've got it upside down. So, um, you have a tape measure for the new course. There was a huge commitment to the project from the school community. Learning mentor Seema Hassan painted the brickwork and special needs coordinator Anne Healy worked on a stencil for the school sunflower emblem. If I've got that measurement there, then we can work out the circumference of the sunflower from that. Correct. Peach, you've been involved with the school for many years as a governor. Tell me about the culture and ethos you're looking to create here. Well, it, it's a school in Highgate in Birmingham, which is very much one of the disadvantaged areas. And I think many of the people who come to the school, many of the families that, that use the school, have really had their own disadvantages as well. Uh, and I think the starting point is how much can we create this as an inclusive society? How can we develop a spirit and a warmth within the school? And, and that's very much dependent upon the staff and the uh, the perspective that the school has in embracing people. So Sue, as head teacher here, how do the learning spaces help or hinder you in delivering the vision that Pete's just outlined? Well, at the moment, we have got rather a large population, which has grown in the last two years, so we're actually a bit short of space. So it's obviously of paramount importance. Um, because we have got a large population, there's lots of movement around the place. We need to make sure that when people are kind of passing through um, that they can do that in a safe way. But also the actual learning needs to be done in a very stimulating sort of way. And, and that's something that we are working on at the moment is actually doing a bit of an assessment of, of the spaces and trying to create more spaces, which is actually quite difficult. One difficult space was so the, library, the library, but Sue found a solution to overcrowding problems. It's, um, it's an excellent space, but it's a very overused space and um, we really could do with, with a larger area to so accommodate all the groups that are working here. But it's a very, very busy place, and um, the special needs coordinator, whose base is also in here, asked me if we could create a space outside on the corridor. OK, so if you'd like to look at the space that I was just describing, Sharon, it's here. And previously, it was just a space. There was a piano in here. And because we were so short of space, it was like, right, this would be a good place because it's, it's near the library. So the school is just about breaking point in terms of space and what Absolutely. you've done here is created a really fantastic mm. little working space um, from quite a dark uh, corner but as I can see here you've really brightened it up and made it kind of very child friendly in terms of the design. It will be very well used, there's no doubt about it. Academies are a new type of all ability school. They're a partnership between central government, private sector sponsors and local communities. At the heart of the Academy's programme, government intends that cutting-edge design and new learning environments will facilitate high standards and sharing of best practice between local schools. We've been to Walsall to see one Academy in action. Walsall Academy opened in September 2003. Built at a cost of £17 million by Barnsley, Hewitt and Mallinson, it's one of the first of a new breed of secondary schools. Sponsored by the Thomas Telford School and the Mercer's Company of the City of London, Walsall Academy was designed to have a long, low-maintenance lifespan. Its radical curriculum is modular and students have only two three-hour periods each day. Our specialism is technology and consequently one of the, the first things that they had to do was to design a forefront to the school which was going to um, make specialism technology hit you as you came in the door and the children are at work behind us and you can see that the, the specialism does hit you as you come through the door. It's open plan and it's um, effectively replicated then as you go through the school because much of our methodology here for teaching is that there are long sessions during the day, so three hour sessions and in a three hour session you need space to function and the architects were given these um, indicators before they set out to design and then they designed a school which was providing open plan environments for us to deliver three hour sessions. The design and technology curriculum is led by Deputy Head Jonathan Boyle and is delivered in state of the art facilities. 
Now I've printed off for you your colour image. So far on the human face, you've had a front profile taken and a side profile taken. And you can choose which one you're going to make the jigsaw puzzle out of. We're going to show you how to design that on ArtCamp Pro. The ethos of the school has all been about having a light, open, airy working environment. Um, really, we've worked very hard towards meeting these aspirations and certainly the having the classroom the atmosphere that we have here today, you can see that two classes can exist in one large learning area. The decoration inside the academy is, is, is almost minimalist. The school was built to high environmental standards. There are huge areas of the school in which fresh air is fed, but ventilation is very important. One of the big advantages to us as teachers is that our students in the afternoon are still very much alert. Um, certainly the, the teaching and the curriculum opportunities that exist for the students uh, promote that. But the air is removed, stale air is, re is removed, and fresh air is fed into the building, and that can be seen as you walk around. Although the external structure of the building had been signed off ahead of her arrival, Walsall Academy's head teacher led a project team to design the interior layout of the school. From a modern library space to a refectory, which students can use for hot and cold refreshments from breakfast time to the end of the six hour school day. This is a very modern, vibrant environment. It's a comforting place. It's a, it's a place where students are relaxed, um, they know how their day is going to unfold. They know what is expected of them. They are conscious of the fact that this is their school. They help shape it in every way. It's just a quality school to be fair, like the facilities that we've, we've got, like the laser and the computers in every room. Just love here. There's a lot of room to work in and um, you don't really get distracted that much unless someone's really shouting and that and uh, it's easy to walk around you don't bump into many people it's quite hot and because all the computers then the heat it's quite loud sometimes but, um i don't really like the school colors being purple that's the one thing i don't like contemporary design high quality materials and an innovative curriculum are key to all sorts success the learning environment here, the, at the atmosphere and the ethos that the school has created very in, in its short life is as a result, I'm sure, of a new building as well as of, a, of an approach to teaching and learning which, which I believe very much in, in which is that uh, it should be the student's school, the student's work, the student's achievements, the student's, the student's impulses and, and, and everything really is very student, student driven. But the, the learning areas within the school enable the students to to have a, a, a wonderful environment to work in and that creates an ethos of, of quiet and calm and a, a quietude which allows them to work right the way through the day and that for me um, has enabled them to, to come in, work six hours a day and achieve six hours of hard work. Back at Chandos, wall decking for the sunflower emblem went up. Some Somalian parents help children to paint ethnic designs on terracotta pots. Bright colours to reflect the cultural diversity at Chandos. And these are the colours we use in Somalia? Yeah, yeah. The wall decking comes back in to have the sunflower design stenciled on. Top, bottom. Leslie Howarth, the art teacher, gets a work party organised to make sure that the sunflower and the welcome sign are accurately painted. This is a butterfly, but a butterfly. It's detailed work for little fingers. Seema, as well as being pretty handy with a roller, you're a learning mentor at the school. Do you think you'll be able to use this space once it's completed? Yes, I think that, especially in the summer, it'd be a nice extra space to come out, maybe quite calm in area to bring some a few children out, do some work with. Sort of sitting indoors. And would you be doing that a lot during the week? Definitely. Um, mainly in the afternoons, I work towards after dinner time, especially when they're a bit um, hyperactive towards the end of the day. So it'd be nice to come out and just sit in a nice, quiet spot. With space at a premium, like many primary schools, Chandos has to be imaginative about how it's used having to use stairwells for storage and a staff room too small for the growing team of teachers and support staff are the kind of challenges on the management team's agenda. But they're finding interesting ways of using their learning environments. 
We've recently put in walls in our open plan infant classrooms with two form entry and we had shared space for, for example for year one, so 60 children sharing that space with two teachers and however many teaching assistants. That will impact on standards actually mm. because there are times when you just need to be quiet and it's not so easy to say well we'll all have story at the same time and we'll all have music lessons at the same time. Um, but we, we're quite interested in learning styles. That's something quite new in our continuing professional development this year. We thought about trialling <coughs> one classroom um, that will perhaps have sofas and different areas to um, sort of cater for those kinesthetic visual auditory learners. Um, see, this is a slightly odd place to have a sink. What's this used for? Right. Primarily it's used by the cleaners to fill their sort of buckets and things when they're doing their cleaning duties. But I, I agree with you and I've been noticing this, particularly this week when we've been assessing the space around the school and there's an awful lot of wasted space here at the end. But, you know, unfortunately we've got to prioritise and it's probably not a top priority at the moment, but I can see in the future that we could utilise that quite nicely. And I guess it'd be actually quite expensive to get this taken away soon. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look as if it would be, but I'm sure it would involve plumbers, electricians, um, certainly builders. And at this particular juncture, it's, it's not going to be a top priority. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm sure in the next two or three years, it's, it could be an area that we will certainly look at. Nice to have an endless budget for this yeah, sort of thing, it would wouldn't it? Yeah, very nice. Mm -hmm. With the government set to spend billions of pounds over the coming years, rebuilding and refurbishing schools, much of the emphasis has been on the secondary sector. That's why it's so exciting the government has asked five leading design teams to develop exemplar designs for primary schools as part of its Building Schools for the Future programme. Cottrell and Vermeulen have a vision for a school which creates a flexible learning landscape. The government wants the exemplar designs to be used by schools and architects to provide ideas for school refurbishments or new builds. Cottrell and Vermeulen's design is for an imagined sloping site. They've worked with primary schools for more than 10 years and their approach to schools for the future stresses inclusion and participation, giving school communities a voice in the design process. So they've developed a manual to help schools inform and empower themselves before consulting with architects. Schools need to have a clear idea of what they are about and how they want their school to go, how they want to teach, how they want to present themselves to the world. So when consultants come along and talk to them, they can explain clearly what they need and don't get overtaken by the often uh, quite demanding constraints of a, a, a capital project. They broke down the components of a new school into a kit of parts, such as classrooms, corridors, wet activity areas, Many versions of a school could be created from the kit. So one of our approaches was to take our kit and, and make a random design. So we threw them on the table and then we made order out of that design. And it was meant like throwing, throwing dice and creating a design. Others we made very rigid orders. So we created a spine and then developed classrooms from that corridor. And then we looked at the idea of communal spaces. How would a classroom be affected by having larger communal spaces? So we used different models and ideas for primary schools to then use our kit so they could be developed in many different ways. So we fly into the building through the classroom, which is the focus of the design and show a canvas that provides suggestions of what the building can be, but is blank. We're playing with ideas of colour, interactive walls, textures, and you can see we're inhabiting with different types of activities within the space. It's very much a space made by activity rather than the architecture. So the classroom can be outside whilst the playground is going on. It's a blur between play, learning and corridors. The look of our school, it, it should be able to change with its environment. And we've imagined it as a present that you could wrap or unwrap to create different feelings for the school. So it could be a brick school, it could be a wooden school, it could be a flowered school, it could be anything. Our design wasn't developed fully to say this is a school. Our design was the starting point for a conversation with a real school and a real client. Because we don't actually agree with landing schools in, in communities that should be designed with people.
if we make the frame up and do it over there somewhere, then lay it down, then mark the holes, then dig the holes, then pull all that in with the posts, and then put the sign on the ends is the best way of doing it. And while that's going on, that can be all prepared by the girls, yeah. planting done, and we're not in the way. No, that's very true. And uh, you're probably thinking, what am I going to be doing? Yes, that's I'll it. do the curves for the nice shapes. So you've got the nice bit to do, haven't you? The, Just get on with the it. The difficult bit. <laughs> John Craig gets his team organised to build the base structure for the decking. Head and deputy paint the school sunflower. And the plants for the garden are laid out ready to go in. It's a collaborative venture with staff, parents and pupils all mucking in to get things ready on time. John, the weather's been fairly kind to us, but how's the work going? The work's not going too badly, actually. I mean, as you can see, I've got a few little flower bits to put on the top there for the boards and screw that in. And as I said, it's like decking, but not as we know it, because it's all swooping and sweeping. Um, so a little bit of a curve to come down here. That's why all these arches are here. And of course, over there, as you can see, it swoops up. And in the front of that is a big welcome sign as well. It's been painted by the kids and by the teachers and everybody but me, really. Um, generally, I reckon in about an hour, when all that sort of planting is done there, and then the kids come along and put all the plants into the pots that they painted as well, which look absolutely terrific. It's done. When storage areas in schools look this messy, they can cause a real problem. Unlabeled boxes make it difficult to find resources, too little space to keep everything that you need. All it might take is to box this area in, add some doors, and it would be a really stylish corner. We've been looking at some other storage solutions that you might be interested in. Classroom storage, often overlooked, often frustrating, and ignored at your peril. Because organised storage means an organised lesson. Classic design and used by primary schools everywhere. Fifty-four trays, a lot of project work could go in here. Trays combined with a display unit here. Mobile storage gives you the freedom to carry out activities in a greater range of spaces. This could help with art, geography, or wherever large-scale work is produced. Don't let animals in the classroom unless they're white clean bookstores. All these products comply with the British Educational Suppliers Association Code of Practice and full details are on the Teachers TV website, teachers.tv forward slash all change. At Chandos, green-fingered deputy head Alison Ashfield is potting up aromatic plants with some pupils. They use the pots designed by the Somalian parents painted by the children. The sights and scents will provide a colourful and useful resource for the garden. John Craig's finishing the curved section of the decking as the children proudly bring the finished pots round. I'm thirsty now, I might as well be. Bark chipping will provide weed resistant pathways for the children to explore. It's an effective, safe and low-cost aspect of the design. What do you think of it? I think it looks really nice and that stands out very much. It carries so. on the theme of the, the school with the sunflower. Yeah. Yeah. I planted sunflowers the other day, big striped seeds in white and grey. I want them to try and reach the sky. So this is what I say. Hey, seeds! We've all got sun. We've all got rain and, and good soft soil below. So dig down your roots, push up your shoots and grow, grow, grow. Do you think you'll be able to
to use this outside space for music teaching? Well, it might be fun to use at carnival when we when we have carnival and we have everybody outside um, and we have parades and all sorts of people dressed up and things. Uh, we can we may be able to use it then. I know I'll be using it for my class because uh, it's a perfect story area. One final task: getting the welcome sign up. John, it's all finished. How's it gone? A lot better than I thought, actually. I'll be really, really honest. But what a what an effort from the whole community. The teachers, the children, the parents, everybody pitching in and helping. And they've achieved a great deal in a short space of time. And I think it looks wonderful. I think so, too. The design brief was to create an outdoor learning space with a sensory garden area. Chandos Primary also wanted to celebrate its multicultural ethos. There was a budget of £700, with free labour provided by the staff, parents and children. The school sunflower emblem was a key element in the design, which uses flowing curves to link two separate decked areas. Cost effective, but hard wearing. Year one teacher Carl Peterzak and parent Leon Cornelius helped John Craig with the decking, which was treated softwood and cost £450. The painted sunflower was masterminded by special needs coordinator Anne Healy, assisted by the head and deputy head teachers Sue and Alison. Plants were chosen for a low maintenance sensory garden. Painting and planting of the pots was all done by children at Chandos Primary. Sue, so it's finished. Are you happy? I'm extremely happy and very, very grateful as well. Not only have you created this amazing space, but I think you've created an opportunity for the school to, to work in a really positive, community-minded way. And I think um, I really would like to say an enormous thank you to everybody. I mean, yourselves and, and everybody on my staff and all, all the kind of people who've come from the community, not least of all the children. Um, and you've given me a lot of food for thought. Not only have you provided this space, but you've made me think about every single space in the school now um, and, and how we're going to tackle that. Um, but I really appreciate it and that's a really big thank you. If you have a project that we could help with, or you'd like to tell us about something you've done recently at your school, contact All Change through the Teachers TV website. We'd like to hear from you.